I wonder if you can bring us up to date on anything here. Did that help to unlock negotiations or move the ball on a breakthrough here to end this strike? Well, first, let's start with the historic visit that the president made, completely consistent uh, with his uh, views on the role that unions play in the broader economy. I think he said uh, that uh, record profits uh, should deserve a record contract. Uh, you know, for me, one definition of Bidenomics is if you're helping to bake the pie, you ought to get a fair slice. And unions have always been instrumental in that equation, which is why he's always supported them. Uh, when it comes to the negotiations themselves, you know, the president's not at the table. That's uh, that's the big three in the UAW. And uh, that's for them to work out. I think the president has been very clear uh, about his support uh, for their cause. So is the president in favor of full time pay for American workers? but still working 32 hours a week? Uh, he's not uh, getting into uh, that level of uh, granular negotiations. What he's in support of is what he said today. Uh, the uh, middle class built America and the unions built the middle class. I think that's something like a quote uh, from him. And, and so uh, I've worked for him for a long time. This is not the first, it's the first time he's on a picket line, which is truly historic, but it's obviously not the first time he's uh, stood with unions in various ways, including in terms of policy. I mean, one of the things that we haven't talked about uh, much, and I think that has something to do with its legislative uh, chances, of course, is the, uh, is the PRO Act, the Protect the Right to Organize, you know, something the president has long supported that would make Make, you know, a real difference, but more to, I, I think, more uh, to the uh, more to actual actions, uh, decisive actions he's taken. You know, the current uh, National Labor Relations Board is finally working on behalf uh, of unions, just giving them a fair shake. And by the way, most Americans, by a long shot, uh, very much support that. They think union power is important. Collective bargaining is important, precisely for the reasons I, I mentioned earlier and for what, what the president said out there today. Well, Chris, you don't need us to tell you, Jared, that this White House and this president uh, have embraced the big three. We've seen Mary Barra from GM, Jim Farley from Ford and others at the White House repeatedly for events to kind of highlight what the administration is doing to advance the transition to EVs. Are, are you guys still in touch here? The president's walking the picket <clears throat> line. What does Mary Barra make of that? Well, you know, that's a great point. We should actually go back. And when I was... Um, uh, his chief economist when he was vice president, and you know, he was a strong advocate for rescuing uh, uh, GM and back then Chrysler um, uh, mm -hmm. when, when they hit when they hit their when they hit their troubles because he knows that this is not only an iconic industry for in America but it's you know it's three percent of GDP it's uh, hundreds of thousands of critical jobs you know the UAW 150,000 workers paying you know good middle class wages and fighting for uh, for for a fair shake uh, so uh, he is consistently supported. Uh, both sides of the equation here. And you're right. When it comes to the EV transition, I think that may be getting lost in the mix. Uh, certainly uh, car companies that want to switch to EVs have gotten uh, a lot of benefits from uh, uh, the IRA <clears throat> and, uh, and other measures we praise, uh, uh, we've passed. And I think that's actually one of the points that the UAW has made in their, uh, in their efforts. Well, that's the heart of the issue the UAW has not just with the car companies, but also with this administration. The president took a bit of a swipe at Wall Street. But the crux of the issue is the UAW has a problem with the billions of dollars of federal spending that's going to make electric vehicles that mostly, most of them, will not be made by UAW workers. Isn't that Yeah, I was issue? with you. I was with you until till the end there because uh, I don't think it, it is uh, anything like a foregone conclusion that most of them will not be made by union workers. And in fact, that's right, very much... Right, but they're building the all of these plants in the South, which are right-to-work states. Yeah, and that just means that uh, the, the unions are going to have to work hard to organize these plants. Look, I think the key point here is that there is no reason why uh, a, a domestic... Uh, Semiconductor, uh, I'm sorry, domestic uh, EV uh, manufacturing uh, industry here in this country uh, shouldn't provide good middle class family supporting jobs. That is a very much a premise of, of our work here, very much uh, behind 
uh, uh, the uh, legislation in the uh, uh, IRA, but also in the CHIPS Act. We want to build chips on domestic soil. We want to build batteries on domestic soil. And frankly, uh, it, that, that's in motion. We've seen hundreds of billions of private capital come in from the sidelines. There is no world in which uh, this uh, president uh, is, uh, is in charge that those aren't good jobs. They have to be good jobs. We don't just care about job quantity. We care about job quality. And there's no reason that we can't have a productive EV industry in this country uh, providing family supporting jobs. Jared, we had a visit today at Bloomberg in Washington uh, by Lena Khan, the chair of the FTC, who spoke with us about her new case against Amazon. Love to hear uh, what she has to say and have you reply. Let's listen. These are a set of tactics, but ultimately Amazon has pursued them to deprive actual and potential competitors of the ab ability to gain the scale and momentum needed to effectively compete online. And having achieved and protected its monopoly power, our complaint details how Amazon is now exploiting that monopoly power in ways that harm customers. Jared, I'm sorry, we only have uh, about a minute here, less than a minute. Was this the right move for the administration? Well, first of all, I think we have to uh, just be clear that, you know, I'm not going to comment on a lawsuit, a 170-page lawsuit that I haven't read yet, and uh, neither will mm -hmm. I comment on the work of an independent regulator. What I will tell you uh, is that, you know, A, I personally have a ton of respect for uh, uh, Chair Khan, but, um, but also, um, peer... Uh, Pillar three of Bidenomics is more competition. That helps consumers, yeah. that helps workers, and that helps the economy.